Hello everybody, welcome to G4G here on YouTube. Today we are going to be taking a look at a Twitch integrated game from, of all places, Amazon Studios. And it is called Breakaway. So Amazon Studios is going to be getting involved in three games so far at the moment. One of them is Breakaway. Then there's going to be an MMO, sandbox MMO, called New World, and another game, a shooter maybe, called Crucible. You can add them to wish lists and orders on Amazon to keep watch of them, but Breakaway is the first one that Amazon is pushing out. The best way to describe it is kind of football, basketball, Rocket League kind of a deal going on over here. Um, or like maybe those, if you happen to remember those old, um, games from like the Dreamcast and early PlayStation eras, PlayStation 2, like NFL Blitz and, uh, NBA Jams and everything like that. It's sort of what this is like. First thing I will do is go through just about everything and then hop into the tour tutorial, just in case the tutorial crashes again. So here is the landing screen, and um, my FPS for the GeForce experience is not showing up in the corner, so you can tell how this interacts with things on your system a little bit. You first download something called a Twitch launcher before you get involved in the game, and then you can actually like install Breakaway and pull it up. As you can see, my Twitch name is over here in the upper right, and I am actually signed in with my Twitch account. We have the servers being up from Thursday, 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Time to Monday, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific Time. So adjust accordingly depending upon your time zones. And um, it has this thing called Metastream, which provides additional information to XSplit and OBS. They are pushing the curse client for voice. They want your feedback, so provide it to them if you play, and you get to uh, play against the devs 1 to 4 p.m. Pacific time in the entire weekend. First things first, settings. We have audio settings. We have gameplay settings. Notice we do not have keybinds. Fuck that. I hate games that force me into their keybinds. Uh, I think Ghost in the Shell was one. No, not Gits. South Park. The South Park um, game. Not Fractured But Whole. That's the one that's coming out. But the first South Park RPG, that one did that too. You couldn't change your keybinds in that. I hate ones that don't let me set some of my mouse buttons properly, like, uh, you know, I have actually a new 602 that's waiting for me out in the mail, but I've been using 700s for a while, and 700s have a lot of nice buttons on the sides that I often use for reload and uh, melee attacks in my games and everything like that. And I tend to bind jump to my middle mouse wheel. Well, a lot of games don't recognize the wing buttons on mice. This just doesn't even have any kind of alternate key binding. And I don't like that. I don't think they should force default key bindings on anybody. Uh, it's a Wasset game. And maybe not everybody is... A wasp player out there despite the fact that it is the most common and if you're not a wasp player sometimes you get called an arrow newbie but you know if if that's what you're comfortable with then that's what you do but yep can't change it here then we have social with this thing called metastream which allows you to send extra data to obs or xsplit Warriors, crates, profiles. So pro crates, profiles, deals, watch. Do not return anything. Help tells you a little bit about the game, but the tutorial will do that in greater detail. So here's an example map. Your team starts here. You go towards the midfield. You pick up the relic. 
and then you get it to the enemy's little goal well. Destroying that crystal gives you a health buff. Destroying that one gives you a damage buff. Here are the eight warriors. A MOBA style building or uh, purchasing system. You can also pass in the game. You can do buildables. And tabs show stats. So, taking a look at the warriors. We have Spartacus the melee fighter. He's one star. He's got a slide, a dash, a three hit combo that can't be interrupted. And his ultimate is retribution. He builds catapults and ramps. Thorgrim. Thorgrim the melee tank, another one star. He can armor up. He does a spinning attack. He does a ram's head. And he does this thing called Ragnarok. Now, one thing that you will note about Thorgrim is that his cooldowns are very, very low. So this is probably a good person for a beginner. He's a little bit lower in his cooldowns than Spartacus. He builds demolition hammers and he builds walls. Here's Anne Bonnie. I like to call her Captain Scarlet from Borderlands 2 DLC's Scarlet's Booty. She's an attractive sort with an amber bosom. And she is listed as three stars. Primary attack, a dodge roll, sniper shot, a rocket jump that is called a musket jump, and a hull buster, powerful cannon blast which deals damage and knocks back all opponents in its path. She builds trampolines and ballistas. Her cooldowns are pretty high. Alona, Alona the Azteki looking ranged support. She's a two star. She has a orb attack, a short range teleport, a radiance which heals people, short cooldown, a sunburst, blessing of the sun. She builds sun shrines which heal people near them. Light of Judgment, a powerful mirror targets the nearest enemy and deals damage, which scales up over time. So like a Protossi beam. I call this guy Black McCree. He looks like a combination of McCree and Saz from Final Fantasy XIII. He's listed as two-star difficulties, a two-shot auto attack, double down, a defensive roll, power shot, strong double shot, which deals good damage and a knockback. Slide shot and blazing barrage. So he's everybody's ultimate. So everybody's ultimate seemed to be about between 20 and 30. With 30 being the highest, 20 being the lowest. He builds a barrel dispenser and he builds jails that people have to be. You have to beat on the jail to get people out. Morgan Le Fay listed as three star difficulty. She becomes intangible and can fly. Burden of Sin, projectile that passes through people, circle of spite, cursed hex on the ground, slowing opponents, an aura of silence. An elder stone that accumulates energy as nearby characters take damage and then explodes. And it Tome of Frailty targets nearest enemies, reduces their attack strength. Black Knight. Black Knight, back down to one star. Uh, longer cooldowns than Thorgrim. Uh, armor boost triggers an explosion after a little bit of time. Devastation, a lunging attack that pulls people in. Walk of Iron. He builds siege engines. Spike traps. Victor. And then Victor, the ranged nuker, a projectile that goes forward triggers AoE. Shock field which knocks opponents back and absorbs projectiles. Static burst. An AoE projectile that applies static charge which explodes after any follow-up attack. Wild arc. Maelstrom. He builds a Jacob's Ladder that messes up jumping people. And a turbine which emits time pulses of electricity which can stun opponents if they don't jump over them. So, based on what I saw of the streams earlier, they um, had this sponsored Extra Life tournament where they were giving away a machine that was cooled by Coke instead of water cooled. It was Coke cooled. And the teams were like Diet Coke versus Coke Free versus Coke Regular. And um, 
what I saw a lot of was some Spartacuses. Thorgrim. Can't say if I saw Thorgrims, really. And Definitely and Bonnie's Alonas. Because I remember the Sun Shrines. And, and I remember them talking about and Bonnie. Rollins. A lot of Rollins, because I remember the Barrel Dispensers. A lot of Morgan Le Fays. Definitely a lot of Black Knights. I was hearing people complain about how tough it was to take him down. Victor. Can't say I saw a Victor, in all honesty. Maybe, but they were not really talking about it. So, uh, I will start the tutorial really quickly, and you can see kind of what the gameplay is like. When you do the tutorial, you are playing through as Spartacus. So it is a 4 on 4 as you can see. And in this beginning it's just about the camera telling you it's wasted with space, blah blah blah. And as you can see I can actually jump over things. For that slide one, if you just happen to hit shift at the final point where it wants you to go, it counts. So you can slide down things or kind of do like a uh, Titanfall slide. If you pick up the ball, if you pick up the rock, you move slower. However, it will tell you that sliding is not affected by it. Just regular running. See, I could just hit shit off. Oh, sticky keys. Man. I thought I had disabled. That seems to be back. I used to have that disabled. Okay, so when you are holding the rock, you have different abilities. Your attack abilities go away. And your mouse clicks change to relic abilities. Here it wants me to pick up the rock and pass the rock. To Anne, and then Annie is going to give it back to me. Now, it wants me to dash through this dude's attacks. Now, I can either throw it from here, or I can Kobe it. I'm going to Kobe it. Booyah! Now, it wants me to do a deployable versus deployable thing. So if I get near this, it's just going to try to shoot me. But I can build my catapult. And it's going to start nuking it. If we look away, it's kind of hard to see because of the beam, but there's fives showing up over there and that's the damage being done from my buildable to their buildable now it wants me to go up to the healing shrine which is typically placed by alona and i can pick up this gold that dropped now it wants me to get into a fight with Thorgrim. And I just dashed through his attack. Now it wants me to hit him with Q. Now it wants me to hit him with my other ability, Glory. And then there's Retribution, his ultimate. So, now we are in free play mode, where we could do uh, a bunch of these objectives really that will show up in just a moment. So it's trying to load it up, which is why you see it kind of chunking over here. Well done.
And I'm gonna throw this way up field because I have to kill this guy. So a good combo for Spartacus is his dash into the E, so the Q into the E. And yes, you can absolutely kill somebody by knocking them off the edge of the map. So Thorgrim's dead. We're gonna pass it. She's gonna pass it back. One of the other things that I have to do is destroy crystals for a team buff. So we're going to throw that way up there for now. Killing this crystal is going to give my team an attack buff. If I kill the other one, I get a health buff. Something you can do is something like, well, I overshot. It's kind of a cheap tactic, but you can throw them the rock, which will disable their attacks for a few moments. And then when you hit them, they are forced into dropping it. And, of course, you can do the long-range throw, which didn't quite make it over for some reason. So, the ways of winning are dunking the ball, getting the ball to that well over there in some way, shape, or form, or wiping the entire team so all four of their people are dead at once, or going into sudden death where sudden death comes into play that is when your um nobody's been scoring oh so you don't even have to jump it just does it for you well that's nice acceleration um if nobody's scoring and sudden death kicks in basically the uh, score zones on the field come up to maybe about here. And as long as the ball crosses that line, you get a score. So you don't have to get it all the way to the well, but you have to only get it about um, maybe halfway to the well. So I think... If I was the blue team and we were in sun death, I think the score zone would be like right here. And that would constitute a win in sun death. So it seems like the middle mouse is a 180. Maybe not. Let me check that again. Yeah, the middle mouse button seems to be a 180. What I was noticing in the um, competitive streaming earlier, a lot of people would dash in for their scores when they scored. Relic advancing. In position to score. So I noticed a lot of things like they would juke over here, maybe stop like they were going to throw, uh, juke somebody out, and then dash it in like that. Another few things that I was noticing on the maps that they would play is that enemies were dropping their spike traps like around here and here kind of forcing people to be channeled through a certain way. It looks like it should be making it, but it's not. The announcer says I'm in position. But it always falls short, no matter how Got it. 
No matter how long you hold it at that particular spot. I think you have to be a little closer than where he announces it. So, that is a look at Breakaway. It's going to be interesting. I, I think I'll give it a try a few times over the weekend. See what it's like. Seems like there are potentially some very easy characters to get used to. Um... In signing off of this, I'm going to say I really dislike the ability not to control my keybinds. Uh, there are just certain ways that I like to do my keybinds, and this game would be one of the ones that I would definitely do a certain way. And it doesn't look like I can change that. So, what I may do is just use my Logitech gamepad, that Nostromo kind of thing. And see if I can uh, set it up that way. But um, it, it, it could be fun. I, I don't know if they're going to make an eSport out of it. There's been a few things that have shown up in the MOBA sphere. 